in the field of astronomy in 1973 there were a couple of scientists who got the Nobel Prize and these couple of scientists they described the creation of the universe and they called it the Big Bang and they said that initially our universe it was a primary nebula then there was a big bang there was a secondary separation which gave rise to galaxies the stars the planets the Sun the moon and the earth on which we live this they call as the big bang the glorious Quran mentions this in a nutshell 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya chapter number 21 verse number 30 the ayah I started my talk with and it says Avalam yaral lazina kafiru do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal arda that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder this verse of the glorious Quran speaks about the big bang in a nutshell 1400 years ago which science has discovered recently hardly 30 years back 35 years back the glorious Quran says in Surah Fusilat chapter number 41 verse number 11 moreover he comprehended in his design the sky when it was smoke and said to it and the earth come ye together willingly or unwillingly and they said we come in willing obedience Allah SWT says that he said to the sky when it was smoke come ye together along with the earth willingly or unwillingly and they said we come together in willing obedience today the scientists they tell us that initially the celestial matter of the universe it was in the form of gas and that big word used in this verse of Surah Fusila chapter 41 verse number 11 is Dukhan Dukhan does not merely mean gas it specifically means smoke and today scientists say that smoke is a more closer and more scientific as compared to gas because that time it was hot imagine the Quran mentions 14 years ago which we discovered recently that the initial celestial matter of the universe it was in the form of smoke previously the human beings we thought that the earth on which we live it is flat it was in 1577 Sir Francis Drake when he sailed around the earth he proved that the earth was spherical Quran mentions in Surah Luqman chapter number 31 verse number 29 it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who merges the night into day and merges the day into night alam tara anna allaha yuliju layla fin nahari wa yuliju nahara fin layli it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who merges the night into the day and merges the day into the night merging is a gradual and slow process the night slowly and gradually merges into the day and the day slowly and gradually merges into the night if the earth was flat there would have been a sudden change it would have been a gradual process of night merging into the day and day merging into the night Allah gives a similar message in Surah Az-Zumur chapter number 39 verse number 5 it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who overlaps the night unto the day and overlaps the day unto the night the Arabic word used here is kawara which means to overlap a coil so the Quran says it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who overlaps or coils the night unto the day and overlaps or coils the day unto the night coiling the word kawara is used how you coil a turban unto your head so this overlapping and coiling of the night unto the day and the day unto the night is only possible if the shape of the earth was spherical if it was flat it was not possible and Allah further says in Surah Naziyat chapter number 79 verse number 30 we have made the earth as an expanse and we have made the earth x-shaped wal ard ba da zalika da ha means and then we made the earth x shape one of the meanings of the ha is an expanse and the other meaning of the arabic word the ha it is derived from the arabic word duya which means an egg 
And we know today that the earth on which we live is not completely round like a ball. It is geospherical in shape. It is flattened from the pole and it is bulging from the center. And the Arabic word duya doesn't mean a normal egg. It specifically means the egg of an ostrich. And if we analyze the shape of the egg of an ostrich, it too is geospherical in shape. Imagine, the glorious Quran mentions 1400 years ago that the shape of the earth is geospherical. It does not say spherical only, it specifically mentions like the egg of an ostrich. Previously, the scientists, they thought that the light of the moon was its own light. But Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61, Blessed is he, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has made the constellations in the sky and placed therein sun, that is a lamp, having its own light, and moon, having borrowed light. The Arabic word used for the sun in the Quran, it is shams. And its light is always described as siraj, wahaj, or diya, which means a torch having a light of its own, or a blazing lamp, or a shining glory. Always the light of the sun is described as wahaj, siraj, or diya, meaning a light of its own. The Arabic word for moon is kamar, and its light is described as munir or nur, meaning borrowed light or a reflected light. There is not a single place in the Quran where the light of the moon is described as its own light. And the Arabic word for star is najam, and its light is described as sakir, meaning the light, by the time it reaches the earth, it loses its brightness, like a piercing brightness. The bright light, by the time it reaches, it consumes itself. And this message, that the sun has its own light, describing as Wahaj, Siraj, or Diya, and the moon having borrowed light, that is Munir, or reflection of Nainur, is mentioned in several places in the Quran, including Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 5, as well as Surah Nuh, chapter number 71, verse number 15 and 16. And the Quran says in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 3, that what Najm was Saqib, describing the star, its light as Saqib, that means it pierces, it's a piercing darkness. Previously, the European scientists, they believed that the earth was the center of the solar system and the universe. And all the planets, as well as the moon and the sun, it revolved around the earth. This was called as geocentrism. And this was believed since the time of Ptolemy in the 2nd century BC till as late as 16th century until Nicholas Copernicus in 1512 he propounded the heliocentric theory of the planetary motion and he said it is the sun which is the center of the solar system and all the planets as well as the earth, it revolves around the sun. And later on, a German scientist by the name of Johannes Kepler, in 1609, he wrote in his book by the name Astronomia Novia, that not only do the planets and the earth, they revolve around the sun, but they also rotate about their own axis. And when I was in school, I passed my school in 1982, about more than 25 years back. There I too read that the planets and the earth, they revolve around the sun, and the planets and the earth, they rotated about their own axis. And the whole solar system, also in the galaxy it revolved, including the sun, but the sun did not rotate about its own axis. In this context, the sun was stationary.